Hi everybody, my name is Doug Keeling and I'm going to show you how to create this 3D text effect uh, using Photoshop. And I'm using uh, CS5 and uh, okay let's get started. I've created a new document. It's uh, like 1200 pixels by 1000 pixels and um, I've filled it with black and what I'm going to do now, I've got the text tool and I'm just going to type out my text and uh, let's see I'm using a font, um, if I can spell, using a font called Bender, and it's available, it's a free font, it's available from uh, losttype.com. Uh, they've got some really cool, cool fonts. Definitely, uh, definitely you should, you should donate, donate to their, to their project. It's great to have free fonts from, um, from a great source like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, grab uh, a color, whatever color you want. It should work. I'm going to use this blue color. Maybe uh, fade it out a little bit more. All right, so I've got that. And uh, I'm going to go in here and do a couple things to it right off the bat. First of all, I'm going to add a stroke to it, layer style. Um, in case you didn't realize, uh, I used the, the shortcut um, Alt Backspace after I chose the color to fill in the color of my text, so that was that. Sorry, I'm not very good at explaining my shortcuts all the time, which um, most people who work with Photoshop uh, get to know them pretty quick anyway. So, All right, I'm going to add a stroke. I've got uh, four pixels. Right now it's black, so we can't see it. Uh, I'm just going to actually select the color of the text and go with that for now. And then I'm going to go up to Gradient Overlay, and I'm just going to create this um, just from scratch real quick. Just select maybe the foreground to transparent. We're going to move this, uh, this slider here that has the more of the opacity. We're going to grab that, take it to the middle. We're going to grab the color stops then and select white, and uh, I can just click that one. Click over there, and if we pull and drag, that one will go. Okay, so you can kind of see the effect that we're that we're going with here so far. Maybe just move it down a little bit. All right, so we have that now, and I am going to change that blend mode to overlay, which it works. You know, obviously on different colors, you get a different effect with it. Um, so we're going to go with that. You can also add, uh, sometimes I'll use like a pattern overlay or texture. Let me look at our textures here. Okay, I have uh, sort of a, a noise kind of uh, thing that I, that I did in there. And you can, you can throw that in there if you want to. You know what, I, I really, don't, really don't need that. And I don't, uh, I don't want the bevel and emboss. You can do a pattern overlay of that. Um, there we go. And... Like I said, it's basically a pattern I created myself, but it's just a noise pattern. And it's not uh, necessary that you have this if you don't want it. But it just adds a little graininess to that text. And I'm just going to bump the opacity of that down and uh, switch that to overlay as well. All right, so there we go. We've got our text. Now what I'm going to do is uh, basically just duplicate this text over here by pressing Command or Control J. And I'm going to uh, create a new layer beneath that, well, on top, and then drag it under. Uh, select both of those and press Command or Control E, and that merges them into one raster version of the text. Okay, at this point now, uh, make sure you're working on the raster version. You're going to hit the Lock Transparency um, button, and I'm going to grab a darker blue and I'm going to fill it using that same alt backspace shortcut. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is switch to the move tool and holding down the alt or option button you're going to just alternate between pressing the left arrow and the right arrow key. So hold down alt, alt and then I'm going to hit right down, right down, right down, right down, right down. And you can see what that's doing is creating all these extra layers um, and I'm gonna do it until I have awesome copy 40 so I have basically just created 
40 of these and what that did you know was just move it it duplicated the layer and each time moved it one pixel so um, anyway I'm gonna grab all of those select them all and then I'm going to uh, press command or control E and that merges them all into one single unit so now we have our text layer and we also have our kind of 3D layer behind it and just the fact that it's a darker color already gives us that 3D effect that I was looking for. Uh, now the only thing here that I'm going to do that uh, is kind of different and pertains probably only to CS5 and up I think is the rotate view tool um, that goes with the hand tool. I'm not sure if that was in CS4 or not. I'm going to hold the shift key down and start to rotate this and rotate it to 45 degrees. There we go. Because that's essentially what uh, what we did by pressing, you know, alternating down and left on the arrow keys. Uh, we basically created a 45 degree angle here. Now I'm going to switch to the brush tool. I'm going to switch to the default colors by pressing the D key and then pressing X so that white is in the foreground. And then I'm going to grab a brush. Uh, I'll just grab one of these guys. I'm going to look at my brush. Uh, settings and I'm going to add noise to that uh, transfer transfer is fine um, I think I'm going to leave it off and then go to brush dynamics um, and I'm going to just set my minimum diameter here um, it doesn't have to be it, it doesn't really matter too much but you want if you're using a pen I'm using a, a, a Wacom or Wacom tablet I don't know how you pronounce it but in any case it's an old thing, but uh, it still works. So, all right, you can do it with a mouse or whatever. You don't need to have a tablet to achieve this effect. Okay, so on top of this layer, I'm going to create a new layer, and it's going to serve. Uh, this bottom layer is going to basically serve as the mask, the clipping mask for what we want to show. So, if I press Alt, you'll see you get this little, this little. Uh, uh, icon here and click right between those two layers it pops this under here and I'm gonna call this highlights and I've got my got my brush here and I'm just gonna go in here and start painting in these edges in different places where I think it might you know be appropriate to do that so you know maybe around the edges of these guys on there on there and so on. This could take a little while, so I'm going to probably speed up the video and you guys can just watch. Alternate your uh, your brush size, you know, for whatever word you're dealing with. All right, so basically I've created most of these little accent line things here, and uh, that's looking pretty good. I guess there's a couple more that I need to add. Take a look around here, zoom out. All right, and you can see we're starting to achieve a pretty nice effect. The next thing I'm gonna do with this highlights layer is uh, turn that to overlay. So it, it kind of dulls things down a little bit. Um, and depending on the color, you know, it makes it a little less subtle. You, you might like it, you know, really popping out with the white, but I want it to be, uh, you know, blend in more with the blue. So, all right. Now that I've got that, um, it's not so important now that you have uh, this thing rotated, but I think I'm just going to keep it there for the time being. I'm going to switch to um, the uh, black color, the, the background color, and create a new la layer. Um, if you hold Alt and click the the new layer, um, sorry, Command and uh, and click the new layer button, it'll create a new layer beneath. And I guess we'll call this I don't know shadows or low lights. Grab your brush tool again, and to be honest with you, I probably should have left uh, transfer on. I don't know a whole lot about brushes and stuff, so um, in any case, we've got our black now, and just kind of bear with me. Some of this might not look too great right off the bat, but um, 
it'll it'll get better as we uh, as we go and and modify things. What you're basically doing is kind of the opposite of what we did the last time. You know, you're just kind of painting in some of those low-lying areas where you know you don't think as much light would show through, and uh, you know, obviously, kind of in in between uh, in between each word uh, letter. I'm sorry, between each letter, I can't talk and can't talk and do this at the same time. Apparently, anyway, in between each one of these, um, you know, obviously, it's going to be a little darker because uh, you've got the shadow of the of the thing um, that's right beside it that's kind of showing up. You have to watch. Um, obviously, with this with this front layer, this awesome text layer on top, we don't have to worry about. Um, you know, if you look at it, you know we've got stuff all over the place here. That doesn't really look too great, but as long as you have you know your layer on top, it really doesn't matter. All right, so at this point, I think we're pretty much good to go um, to rotate ourselves back around here. All right, so there we've got that. And I'm going to basically do the same thing. You can set it to overlay or uh, soft light. Um, and it just kind of tones that down. You zoom in, you can still see we kind of got a, a graininess to it, which is what I like. And what I'm going to do right now is go up to my awesome text layer and a uh, little Photoshop glitch there. I'm going to change the fill color of the stroke to white and I'm going to change the blended mode to overlay and it's going to give us kind of a neat a neat effect around here I kind of like that I I don't know why I just like it so alright um, and what we're also going to do is press the command button and and click on the uh, the icon here for the awesome layer with that, we're going to create a new layer. Uh, we can do it right above the highlights layer. And uh, we'll just call it top highlight. And what I'm going to do is uh, switch my foreground color to white, press command delete, and that fills that whole, let me turn the awesome layer off, it turns this whole thing white, obviously. Um, now I'm going to switch to the marquee tool. And now that we've filled this layer, I'm going to press the shift key or well, I don't even need to do that. Just press press the arrow key a couple times, and you see what we're going to do. We're just moving the selection away from away from uh, you know the layer shape, and we're going to just press the delete key, and that leaves us with this upper kind of uh, highlight up here. We're going to then switch that to overlay, and if I turn this back on, you can see that 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 top highlight just gives it a little extra flare on the top. Um, Oops, I keep turning off the wrong one. And I kind of like that effect. So, anywho, beyond that now, we're going to grab our brush tool, um, right click, and what I've done is uh, appended to the normal brushes, I appended the assorted brushes um, file. So I'm not going to go through that again, but it'll ask you if you want to replace the brushes you have or append them. And it doesn't matter, you know, really what you do. So I'm going to select this little X kind of brush. And I'm going to go in here, uh, go to brush shape um, and my angle jitter. I'm going to just do that so that it basically shows up in all kinds of sizes. So what we're going to do now is just uh, create an extra layer up there. And we're going to create a bunch of little star bursts to go around the text. So if it'll let me name the layer here, we'll name that star bursts. Alright, so I'm just going to go in here and wherever you see fit. Normally you'd kind of want to do it okay, where there's highlights already. You know, I'm just going to turn going to turn the minimum diameter or size jitter off. I want the angle jitter, but I want the minimum diameter, there we go, to just be consistent. Alright, undo that. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. 
Now, kind of just click in there. You might want one here, 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 maybe in there, maybe there. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. Just uh, whatever your preference is. Get the bottom of your letters if you want them down there. All right, now I'm going to just decrease my brush size a little bit and uh, click again. And as long as that angle jitter's on, sometimes it'll. You want it to basically just vary the uh, the degree of of this brush so that. And you could you could go in and you know with a certain different. You go in with a different brush and, and do the same thing basically, um, you know, at a consistent angle and whatever. There's a lot of ways to do this. Some of them you can't really see too well, some of them you can, and that's fine. All right, I think I've gotten most of them. Might even do some extra ones on some of them. And then from there now, we're going to grab. Uh, our brush tool again, we still got that. I'm just gonna scroll back up and, and just grab one of these other guys, test it out. And uh, I'm gonna go into my brush settings again. I'm gonna just turn shape dynamics off because I want to create a consistent, um, a consistent kind of a, a glow, just a dot on each one of these. Just go and through and start clicking these. You could do this on a separate layer from the actual little starburst if you wanted to. Um, depends on how big you want to go here. And actually, what you want to do is actually move the starburst layer up up above. That's why we couldn't see them. All right, and now we've kind of got this shiny text going on. So once again, that's the finished effect there, and uh, I guess I'll leave you with that. Obviously, you can uh, rework this and expand it and do as little or as much as you want. The possibilities are kind of endless. And uh, as I mentioned before, you know, there are a lot of great ways to do 3D that are more interactive, you know, so that you can go back and edit and things like that. But it is a pretty good method uh, just for, you know, something kind of quick and easy and, um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, you can feel free to leave comments. Let me know what you like. If there's anything that you'd like to see a tutorial on. I haven't done a lot of these, but I'd kind of like to uh, get into doing more of them. So you can let me know what you think. And uh, you can pick up a few freebies at my website, www.dougkeeling.com. Um, some different things there, some brush sets at least for now. Hopefully I'll be able to add some more in the future. Thanks for watching.